What is up, everybody? We are here with our week six preview, first video of three. Dad, it's already week six. Can you believe the NFL season's already, what, almost a third done? Uh, flies by, doesn't it? Yeah, we're, we're starting to get into a point where, you know, you know, there's most teams that are going to be relevant. They're starting to show that they're relevant. And some teams are, they're, they're kind of struggling, you know, to, to maintain and, and things like that. And, um, you know, it, it's not, it's hard to, it's hard to say that, Hey, you're out of the picture or something like that you know like the bears or, or um i don't know bears and vikings who play this weekend i think but um mm -hmm. you know it's but yeah there's um some some interesting things we got another i think we got another game in england um yep that's so. the uh, that's one we're leading off with today actually this week is an interesting Week. I think there's only three games that have a over under uh, of over 45 points, which you know I, I think 45 is is most most games probably fall within that 44 to 45 and a half range. Anything below like 43 is a pretty low over under, and then anything above like 47 or above is like you know getting up there. And usually I I feel like I don't know I haven't looked at the numbers. I feel like we have at least like a third of the games are like over 45 points and over under, um, but not this week, not this week at all. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're getting into it. We're just going to preview five games in today's video. Uh, just talk about the fringe starters and whether or not we would start them and who we'd start them over. We're not going to talk about the obvious guys like always. Um, and um, yeah, half PPR is all our rankings and numbers and we're just going to get right into it. Starting with that London game. Ravens at Titans over under of just 42 points. Ravens are favored by four. Uh, we'll start with the Ravens. You know, Lamar Jackson's an obvious start um, and Mark Andrews an obvious start. So I think the two the two big questions here are is the running back situation in, in Baltimore. Um, Dad, is there any running back you want to start? And by the way, it's not a heavy bye week this week. So a lot of injuries, but only two teams on bye. So yeah. Um, you know, Baltimore running back. Um, is there anyone you're interested in? Basically, Gus Edwards or Justice Hill? Do you want to start either one of those guys, or are you looking to avoid them at all costs? Yeah, I don't know. Avoid is not the right – to me, is not the right word with these guys. But your expectations ought to be low. So, mm -hmm. in other words, do you have to start them because of injuries or bye weeks, you know, whatever um, – then you got to plug them in and you got to accept what they give. And, um, you know, and, and they're, and they don't give a lot. So Gus Edwards is irrelevant in the passing game. It seems like, um, justice Hill. Yeah. He's, he's slightly behind them, you know, but, um, you know, they both look good on the field, you know, when they're playing and they're getting the handoffs and, and stuff like that. And, um, but, you know, it's too bad, um, you know, too bad about Dobbins because, you know, he, he, you know, Gus Edwards would look a little more relevant, if I think, uh, mm -hmm. if Dobbins was there. But uh, so, uh, you know, and my feeling is if you're pushed into it, yeah, you got to start. Now, the problem is, is which one, you know, so it's yeah. like last week they were leaning towards Hill. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Hill is getting more of the valuable touches. And by that, I mean, he's getting catches and he's getting goal line work, um, which is not what you would expect from a smaller running back. You would expect Gus Edwards to be the goal line guy, but they're using Justice Hill in the, as the goal, in the goal line. I don't know if they just, a little more creativity or something. Um, you know, Gus Edwards is probably gonna get 10 to 15 carries, depending on how the game plays out. Problem is, it's gonna be between the 20s and he's not gonna get catches, like you said. Um, so he's going to have to bust off a big one or he's going to have to score a touchdown. So I, I would lean Justice Hill. Um, and yeah, like if you need him, you can you can start him. We'll go over some guys, for example, um, Dad, like Justice Hill, or would you start Deontay Foreman, uh, who should be the lead back for the Bears against Minnesota? Who, who are you leaning there? Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I kind of like Foreman. I think he's pretty good. Uh, 
problem is I've heard the weather is not uh, going to be ideal in, in Chicago, which, I mean, that's good for a running game, but it's not, you know, it's not great. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, Chicago likes to run the ball. And, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think I'd lean towards Foreman, you know. I mean, just a couple of years ago, he was a thousand-yard rusher. Yep. Yeah, I agree. What about Justice Hill or Saquon Barkley, who's coming off an injury and no Daniel Jones? I no, I just still, gonna... yeah, I got to go with Saquon. You yeah. know, you got to, you know, top tier running back and stuff like that. It's too bad, you know, Giants seem to be falling apart a little bit, you know. Yeah. They need they need all their players. And when you guys start getting hurt, you know, your relevant guys – that's mm -hmm. you know where where it's a problem yeah um and then a couple more here what about justice hill or chuba hubbard who miles sanders was ruled out uh but chuba hubbard plays miami who are you who are you leaning there well you know geez i can see carolina you know getting behind you know it's kind of a track meet when it's uh you're playing miami and stuff so mm -hmm. it's like um you know, are they going to be throwing the ball a lot? And, uh, you know, that's what that's what you're thinking because they're behind, you know. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of kind of the thought process there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, there's still going to be some carries for Chuba Hubbard. I, I like the way that guy runs. He runs hard and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd lean Chuba Hubbard as well. So. Yeah, if you, but if you are choosing between Justice Hill and Gus Edwards, definitely go Justice Hill. There's more more value there. And then the other question is um, is Zay Flowers. Like, are we just kind of past him, like, trying to start him? Like, I know we have a kind of a biased opinion of him, I think, where, like, he had a really good week one. But since then, he hasn't had double-digit points. You know, he's had a couple fine weeks, nine points, 9.8 8.8 and 9.8. So those are fine. Those are okay. Um, I don't know. Are you kind of at the point where like you're trying not to start Zay Flowers as well? Like they still have him ranked as a top 30 guy, but like, I don't know. Would you, would you go with Zay Flowers or Nico Collins? Um, I, I think I'd go with Zay Flowers because three games, um, three out of six games, He's had double-digit targets, you know. Mm -hmm. So, to me, that's – he's still looking at him. You know, we'd love to see a little more consistency, um, I think. And you said uh, Nico Collins? Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Nico Collins. Um, boy, man. I mean, uh, I think Dell is out. Yeah, Tank Dell. You're right. Tank Dell is out. I was just thinking of that. So, yeah. man, I might lean towards Nico Collins. You know. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. He's had two, two really big games of over 100, 150 yards. So you're just hoping you get, you know, a touchdown and and something. What about Zay Flowers or Garrett Wilson, who are they're playing the Eagles? The Jets are. Um. <laughs> Uh, probably tough. Garrett Wilson, I think. Yeah, just the potential kind of, there of mm -hmm. something really big happening, you know. Yeah, and and he's been better. Like Garrett Wilson has three double digit weeks, double digit point weeks. So, um, and then two, you know, they weren't great. They didn't absolutely kill you. So yeah, I, you know, I think I'd lean Garrett Wilson as well. Um, one more here for this uh, for Zay Flowers. Um, Zay Flowers. Or um, the Washington, let's say Terry McLaurin versus Atlanta. No, McLaurin. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. I know his game has kind of been off a little bit, and you know, you know, I don't know why. You know, Sam Howell, they're throwing the ball, and he only had one game where he kind of laid a big egg, but um, mm -hmm. so I, I still got to go with McLaurin. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Potential. Um, but that's one of the with the Ravens. You're not starting anyone else on that team. 
Uh, the Titans, there's really only two guys to talk about. Well, actually, not even talk about. Derrick Henry, you're, you're just starting. Are you worried about Derrick Henry at all, Dad? Or are you just, you're still going to roll him out there? And, no, I still got to roll him out there, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, um, Tajay, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, he, I, he still got to go with Derrick Henry. Yeah, what about Tajay Spears? He's actually RB30 on the year. He had his best game last year of almost 15 points. I know, in a, I know you in a said... Pinch. Yeah, I know you said he's getting uh, he's getting a lot of touches. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, injuries, bye weeks, or something like that. This is uh, this is probably probably a guy you might want to consider. You know, um, you know he's better. You know, I'll compare him to another rookie running back, uh, Tank Bigsby. Mm -hmm. You know, Tajay Spears is obviously getting better chances or he's getting more chances he's getting more opportunities than deuce vaughn there in dallas so uh um, yeah and um so roll him out there kendry miller another guy who's another rookie running back uh i think with the saints so yeah well roll him out there definitely yeah if you need him you know like i the problem is, like, he's much better in PPR because he's going to catch passes. Like, would you start him or, or Justice Hill in this same game? Tajay Spears or Justice Hill? No, nah, I think I got to go with Justice Hill. Yeah. So he's, he's at that point where, like, if you are super desperate, you can throw him in there. But, like, you know, we're talking about starting him over, like, Charbonnet, Akers, Gainwell, of course. You're starting him over these guys, Ezekiel Elliott. But you're not starting him over Justice Hill, Deontay Foreman, Chuba Hubbard. You're not... You're not starting him over those guys. Those guys are going to get more touches. So um, definitely belongs on rosters. Um, I think, I don't know, is DeAndre Hopkins even a question or we just got to roll him out there, right? I, I would say. Oh, no. Like, yeah, he's got um, his, his numbers haven't been great. He had a good, he had a pretty good week last week. But, um, yeah. you know, even on his mediocre days, he's still producing something for you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I agree. So yeah, he's not DeAndre, even yeah, Hopkins no. is he's in. Yeah, there's a, he's only had two games of over 75 percent of the snap share. He's been kind of had an injury there for a few weeks that I think affected him. But the two games that he's had 75 percent or more of snaps, he's had 11 and 13 targets. So um, last week it turned into a, a really good week, eight catches for 140 yards. So yeah, he's he's in there. So really, there's no one else to talk about. Traylon Burks is out. You're not starting Chica Conquo. His passing game's not great, so you don't want to start more than one guy. So we'll just move on to the next game, the, the commanders um, commanders at the Falcons over under a 42, another one that's low uh, Falcons are favored by two and a half um, with the commanders is Sam Howell. I don't think there's enough bye weeks to, to even really consider Sam Howell uh, as a starter this week. Would you agree with that dad? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, again, if you're desperate is, like I said, he's only had one game or he had what four interceptions and um yeah. and the rest of the time he's he's kind of producing something, you know. It's kind of middle of the road type stuff, so you can Yeah, I think Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I mean it's it's what is it, the uh, the Packers get the other team that's on a bye, but um by week six, but it's the Packers, so Jordan Love um, is it the Steelers that are also on a buy? I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, it um, is. It is. You're right. Okay. So yeah, it's yeah. it's two quarterbacks that not are really you know it's not two starting quarterbacks. I don't think Sam Howell should really be considered. I mean, okay, let's just say someone's choosing between Howell and and Brock Purdy. Who are you leading? Howell and Brock Purdy versus Brock yeah. Purdy. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Purdy. Yeah, I agree. By, yeah. by far, the offense. Look at the team offense and the players and, and yeah, um, and stuff like that. Just um, yeah, for sure. Um, in the running back situation, like we're are we we're still kind of just throwing Brian Robinson in there. He's a he's a top twelve running back to start the year. He's had two mediocre weeks of the la out of the last three. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like this game script. They're going to be in a game, a type of game where they can run the ball. I don't think the Falcons are going to be blowing out the commanders. So I I would consider Robinson as 
kind of like a pretty locked in starter unless you disagree with that dad with Brian Robinson. No, I, yeah, I, I I agree. Brian Robinson yeah. still gets still gets a decent start, so Yep. And then we talked about McLaurin a little bit. Um in three wide receiver leagues, I think you're starting him. Uh two wide receiver leagues, like like I would start like uh, Nico Collins, Garrett Wilson. I'd start would you start Jacoby Myers over McLaurin, Dad? I, I think I would. Oh, the Raider, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. He was, uh, he was um, getting a lot of, a lot of targets, a lot of looks uh, from Garoppolo there. Yeah, for sure. I think it's three, three weeks he's played with Garoppolo. It's been five weeks. He he missed week two. Garoppolo missed week four, I believe it was. Yeah, week four against the Chargers. The three games he's played with Jimmy Garoppolo, he's had ten or more targets. So. Um, it's He's, funny, uh, some reporter asked uh, Belichick, you know, they're all over New England. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you heard about that. Why did you let uh, Why did you let him go? Uh, well, we tried, you know, and, you know, they got yeah. nobody. Yeah, they suck. Oh, they're bad. I mean, I mentioned it when we talked about the, the preview, you know, before the season, it was like, Jacoby Myers averaged – more points than I mentioned Michael Pittman, Christian Watson, Garrett Wilson, Marquise Brown, DJ like he missed five games, which is why his point total was as low, but he averaged double digit points. So yeah, he's he's a good receiver for sure. And New England was dumb to let him go. So um yeah, like those guys I'm starting over McLaurin just to get back to who we were talking about. Um what about Amari Cooper with PJ Walker or Terry no, McLaurin? No. Amari Cooper. Oh, you got yeah. Because you don't have um, you don't have your starting quarterback. I'm sorry, PJ yeah. Walker. You're, I mean, you're okay and stuff like that. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's better I don't than DTR. It. That's for sure. Huh? It's better than DTR at this point. Uh, yeah, it will be. And I think uh, PJ Walker. I think he did. Wasn't he with the Dolphins quarterback in the playoffs last year? No, it was um. He was with the Panthers and the Bears. Um, no, okay. it was, that was Skylar Thompson. For the oh, Dolphins. Skylar. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, well, that guy didn't look too bad. You know, I'm kind of mistaken guys here, quarterbacks. But, yeah. no, definitely no on uh, P.J. Walker. Well, okay, so Terry McLaurin. So Terry McLaurin over Amari Cooper with P.J. Walker starting. What about Terry McLaurin, last one, or Tyler Lockett? Um, <laughs> lock it, man. Jeez, yeah. I like the guy. Yeah, I I could roll with lock it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. Like, I think I know a little bit more. And lock it hasn't been great this year, but I I think he can have a kind of a bounce back, bounce back game for sure. Um. Okay. Well, we'll move on from there. Uh, oh, Logan Thomas, I think, is in the starting conversation now. Like, um. Well, yeah, he had one fantastic game, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, his he, usage and, has been good, though, the other games, like his targets and stuff. So, it's not if he can, off. yeah, if he can just stay healthy. I mean, we liked him a few years ago. He had a very good uh, fantasy year as a tight end. And then there was like two years of injuries. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if they're going to throw to him and he's going to play. Absolutely. So he, he looked uh, wonderful. What, what, what was that? A Thursday night game, or um... yeah, the Thursday night game. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you start him or Jake Ferguson for the Cowboys? Ah, uh, Ferguson. Okay. I think Logan Thomas has more like targets than Ferguson, but uh, I'm not going to argue against that necessarily. What about Logan Thomas or Zach Ertz? Yeah, Who's... boy, Arizona. You know. Um... Uh, I think I'd go Logan Thomas, I guess. Okay. Yeah, maybe PPR I'd lean Ertz, but I think Logan Thomas has probably a better chance of catching a touchdown. So, um, yeah, that's it for the um, the commander side. The Falcon side, you know, it's pretty obvious with Bijan. You're starting. Kyle Pitts, I think you're still starting. You got a good game. He's a tight end. Like, you just – unless you are holding two tight ends, like, you can make that decision, but – I'm not. I'm still just gonna roll with Kyle Pitts, like, and just hope he gets me at least eight points with the upside of, you know, fifteen points or something. So, um, yeah, it really comes down to like Drake London, Dad. Like, um, I, 
I still want to avoid Drake London, but it was nice to see like they threw the ball a lot more in the in the London game that they played. Was it London game? No. Well, yeah. whatever game they oh. played last. Um, but he has double digit points each of the last two weeks. Are you back to just throwing him in your lineup, or or would you start a guy like I don't know Michael Thomas over Drake London? No, I think I do Drake London. I you know I got I still. They don't seem to prioritize him, though. Um, yeah. You know, like a like a like a number like a team's number one receiver. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it just kind of feels a little weird and um, different. Their their passing yeah. offense, but yeah, I I still think I'm going to roll them out there. What about Drake London or KJ Osborne with no Jefferson? Mm, boy. I think I'd go, well, okay, here we go. Aren't they – Minnesota's playing in Chicago. The weather mm-hmm. is supposed to suck. So, I, you know, take it for whatever you, you want. You, you know, you better check the weather and see. You know, I heard it's windy and raining, so that's not very good for a passing game. And that's yeah. what the Vikings do. So, um, better better check your weather report in Chicago on, you know, Sunday morning and stuff. So, yeah, I'd probably still lean London just for the upside. Um, Okay. Last one, Amari Cooper with, with PJ Walker versus Drake London. No, I I don't know. I'm not trusting the Cleveland situation. That's fair. Very well. I, you know, I just don't think they're going to be scoring too many points or, or whatever. So, so yeah, you're I, more you're more likely to get like a, a two point game with with Amari Cooper and PJ Walker, right? Than you are with Drake London, I think. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I, don't know. I think so. You're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, we'll move off of this game and into the Vikings at the Bears, the game we were just talking about. So I'll kind of quickly look up that weather. But we got the uh, over under of 44. The Vikings are favored, I think, by three. Um, you know, I think Addison, I just checked. He, he was on the practice or injury report, but he had a full practice today, full participation. So he should be good to go. He's a no brainer starter with Jefferson out. Um, you know, KJ Osborne is, is, you know, Kirk Cousins, I think should still be, unless the weather is going to be absolutely terrible. So let's just say that the weather is really bad. There's a lot of wind and rain. Um, who are you starting over Kirk Cousins? Are you starting Dak Prescott over Kirk Cousins? Um, yeah, I think Dak would be all right, even though he's not, uh, you know, he's not wonderful and everything else. So, um, Mm -hmm. would you start, uh, yeah, sorry, go Go ahead. ahead. No, Uh, go ahead. Um, Geno Smith over Kirk Cousins. Yeah, definitely. Okay. What about Stroud against New Orleans? Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking at the Sunday weather report. It says steady light rain in the morning, continuing to the afternoon, few showers. It doesn't seem like it's going to be crazy bad weather. It could change, though. It means Friday right now, so that could change. Yeah, I'm looking at the wind, um, and it's like 15 to 18 miles an hour. So, Okay. Uh, not that, terrible, but yeah. not ideal. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Sam Howell or, or Cousins, if the weather's really bad. Man, um, Howell probably. Okay, but if the weather's just like light rain and, and fifteen mile an hour winds, I think you just roll with Cousins. I do um, against the Bears, bad defense. So, uh, and then KJ Osborne again. We we talked a little bit about him. Um, let's just assume the weather's pretty good. Uh, KJ Osborne or Josh Palmer? Um, or Josh Palmer. Uh, Osborne. Yeah, I agree. Um, KJ Osborne or Michael Thomas? Probably Osborne. Yep. I think I agree with you there. What about um, Amari Cooper? Again, he's he's going to come up a lot. So KJ Osborne or Amari Cooper? Yeah, I'm just not feeling it with Cleveland, man. Just, um, yeah, I don't blame you. 
you know. <laughs> Sorry, Amari Cooper, you know, it's just, um, you know, it's too bad. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I got to steer clear of Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, if you look at P.J. Walker, he's had two games throwing for over 200 yards uh, in about, I don't know, it looks like, 10 to 12 games he's he's uh, played in. Uh, he looks like he's only started about one, two, three, four, five, seven games. So, yeah, two of those set, two of the over 200 yards came in. He has two starts where he threw for over 200 yards. Uh, he has five starts where he's thrown for less than 200 yards. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But, um, yeah, so I think KJ Osborne, for the most part, you know, throw him out there, see what you get. Um, Hawkinson's an obvious start. I think Madison is still, he's had two good, three good weeks in a row of double digit points. I think he's, to me, he's kind of a no brainer start at this point until we start seeing, especially against the bears. until we start seeing lack of production. I think we just keep rolling with Madison. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yep. And then um, on the bear side, I think it's really easy. Fields is a start or, and Hawkinson's an obvious start. Um, but on the Bears side, Fields is an obvious start. DJ Moore, an obvious start. Um, Cole Komet, to me, is like a pretty obvious start. Unless you have, you know, unless you have one of the top tight ends, I think Cole Komet, I think, is tight end like three or four on the year. You know, so unless you're talking about like Trap, uh, TJ Hawkinson or Komet or Mark Andrews and Komet, obviously you're going to go those guys. But um, I, I would roll out like, would you would you do um, Cole Komet over Darren Waller, Dad, playing without Daniel Jones against Buffalo? Yeah, I would. I would. He does have it. You know, um, it's kind of funny. You know, the last couple of weeks, uh, Justin Fields' game has started to improve. And guess who else has started to improve? Komet. So, yep. didn't that happen last year? Yep. Yeah. Same thing happened that. last year. Yeah. So, there's obviously, you know, something connected there. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. He is on the injury report with a hamstring. So, yeah, keep that in mind. That's always a little scary because they can just get knocked out right away. But it is, it's the tight end position. So, like, you know, even if you get a zero from him, it's like, you know, how much points did you actually lose? But you're going to roll Komet out there if he's healthy. Um, Deontay Foreman, I think we're, we're kind of wheels up on him. What if Roshan play? Well, I don't think Roshan's going to play. So, um, We'll, we'll kind of he hasn't practiced yet he's not out of the protocol and i think there's only been one player since like week four of last year when tua had his con concussion issues and they changed the rules and stuff i think there's only been one player to return from that sa that same week um that they had a concussion it was it was like last week or something so um yeah just we're, we're just gonna assume roshan's not playing so yeah for that we, we like deontay foreman then especially against um this vikings defense which is actually a little better than i think we give credit to but um like would you start De deontay foreman over amari di mercado yeah what team yeah for arizona he's playing yeah, arizona Rams. yeah I, th I, th I think so um i'd lean towards um foreman yeah um foreman or the colts guys who he's starting Ooh, Jonathan Taylor or zach moss you know, I'm I'm still gonna roll with Zach until I know I know Taylor's coming. You know, I know he got yeah. ten carries last week and, and stuff like that. The pass, sorry, the run game is um, is is carrying the team. Yep. You know, I gotta I gotta believe. You know, until until you see that you know that that transition shift. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna happen. It should happen. You know. You just yeah. don't know when. So then Whether... Zach Moss over Deontay Foreman. Um, Deontay Foreman over Jonathan Taylor then. They did say they're going to ramp up his carries, whatever that means. So um, would you start Deontay over Jonathan Taylor? Um, oh, boy. No, I, I think I'll, take, I'll stick with Foreman. Yeah. I, I'll say this. If you have a pretty good team and, like, Jonathan Taylor's like your fifth best player, and it's kind of like, well, whatever he gives me, whatever, then I would just throw him in because he has some upside. But if you're like desperate and you need points, I think you gotta go for him in, like just for the safety. And he's a good running, like like you said, he was almost a thousand yard rusher last year. 
when he took over for McCaffrey and he was one of the better running backs in the league uh, after he did. So um, I think you're throwing him in there uh, uh, given the the state of running backs. Now, if Roshan's going to play, that kind of changes everything, but I don't think he is. So, um, yeah, I think we're good there. Good, pretty easy team, the Bengals. So we'll move on to the uh, Seahawks at the – I'm sorry, the Bears are an easy team. Seahawks and Bengals are the next game here. Over under 45 points. Bengals are uh, minus two and a half favorites. Um, we'll, we'll start with the Seahawks and, and Geno Smith. Um, you said yeah. they were under? Uh, who, who's sorry? He said it was under forty-five. It was forty-five. Over under is forty. Is forty-five okay. exactly? Okay. Yeah. Um, which is fair, I guess. I don't know. Um, but Geno Smith, um, like to me, Josh Allen obviously, Mahomes, Hurts, Jackson Fields, Tua, Herbert. What about Trevor Lawrence? Are you starting him over Geno? He's kind of played better than his stats show, but. Um, for fantasy, it's not putting up. Would you start Gino or, or Trevor Lawrence? Um, I probably probably roll with Trevor. I think. I guess that's yeah. that's pretty cutting it close there. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Um, I think there's a little more upside with you know Trevor Lawrence and playing Indy, not the best defense. So I think I think Cincy's defense is better than like the Colts' defense. So and. The Seahawks can win games with like, uh, oh, I guess the Jags can too. I was gonna say running the ball, they can with ETN as well. So I, I think I agree with you though. I mean, what about the same game, Burrow versus Geno? Is Burrow back? Are we just not worried about Joe Burrow anymore? Well, you know, it's funny that um, well Higgins is supposed to be back, yeah, but Burrow kind of had his mojo going just uh, just working with um, Jamar Chase. So you know. Yeah, probably Gino. Yeah, that's just more because you you think maybe it was more like the Arizona matchup for like you know Burrow had a big game. I don't know. Is that what maybe you're a little more worried yeah, about? Yeah, I, I I think so. You know, I think he's you know getting close. You know, if he repeats kind of what he did last week, you know, then we go well. All right, Joe Burrow is kind of. Um, He's back to being Joe Burrow, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. I think for upside Burrow, if you want more of a safe floor, go Gino. Um, yeah, that is a tough one, though, for sure. Um, okay, and then you know, obviously Metcalf, you're starting. Kenneth Walker, you're starting. Um, Lockett, he's always a tough one. Like, again, he hasn't been very good. He's only had one good game, really, this year. We talked a little bit about him, but, like, I, I'm going, you know, guys like Nico Collins, Garrett Wilson, Jacoby Myers over Lockett, um, probably Gabe Davis over Tyler Lockett just for the upside against the Giants. Uh, do you agree with that one, Dad, Gabe Davis over Tyler Lockett? Yeah, he seems to be on a little roll lately. Yeah. So let's, you know, let's see if it continues. Yeah, I mean, he's wide receiver 12 this year. He's had three of the five games in double digit points. One of those games was only 9.8, so almost double digits. So he's only had one week one bust game, and that the whole Buffalo's offense was kind of a bust that week. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of um, in on Gabe Davis. Um, you know, I'd I think I'd start. What about Lockett or, or Michael Thomas? I think that's a good one. Yeah, I, I think I roll with Lockett. I'm just hoping. I don't know. He, he's still getting, I think he's still getting the targets and all of that. Like, so yeah, I think I agree with you. It seems like Michael Thomas is like, if you want a safe nine, 10 points, uh, half PPR, go with Michael Thomas. If you want, you know, potential upside of, of what Lockett can give you a couple touchdowns, a big play, go with that. So I, I think this game could be a little bit of a shootout as well. Um, yeah, I'm just seeing if there's any other close. Did we talk Lock, Tyre Lockett or Drake London? No. Who would you say? Uh, Lockett. Yeah. I think I agree. Yeah, I agree there. Um, Bengals side. So, 
you know, obviously Chase were starting. We talked about Burrow a little bit. You know, we'd probably maybe lean Gino if you want a little bit safer of a floor. If you want more upside, I think go with Burrow. What about Burrow versus Stafford? Stafford playing Arizona. Um, I think I'd take probably Stafford. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's another that's, close one, I think. It so. is. It is. Yeah, I think I'd lean Stafford. Again, like you said, maybe you want to see it one more week for Burrow just to be safe. And I think you're, you know, you're going to get it. I think about it like what has the potential of giving me, you know, less than double digit points. And I think it's almost impossible for Stafford to do that unless he gets hurt. To me, Burrow can do that even if he doesn't. So you kind of just keep that in mind. I'd still go Burrow like over Dak um, and, and guys like that. So, um, you know, Russell, obviously I would have done it over like a Russell Wilson who's already played, but CJ Stroud, how I'm just going Burrow over those guys. But, um, and then, yeah, Chase, we're starting. What about Higgins? If he plays, are you trying to avoid that or you just can't avoid it because he's really good? Higgins? Yeah. T. Higgins. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not. Uh, rib injuries, you know, they, they, he's got broken ribs. Yeah, more yeah, of a decoy, maybe. I'm not, I'm not starting Higgins yet. So he's a, he's, there's a chance like he's just like a decoy, right? Like, yeah. Or he plays forty percent of this, like he plays in the red zone and that's it or something. Um, yeah, I, I agree. If you can avoid it, do it. Um, just, it's a risk. It's a risk to play him after his first week back with broken ribs. So, uh, Mixon's an obvious start and. Um, I don't really want to start any of the other receivers, although Tyler Boyd did have a nice touchdown called back and it didn't really, the penalty didn't affect the play at all. You know, it wasn't like a holding where, well, he wouldn't have scored if it wasn't holding. It was like completely away from the play. So like if Higgins is out, I'm fine with throwing Boyd in there as like a desperation play, but um, not really going to focus too much on Tyler Boyd. So I think we'll just move on from this game and, and finish up with the 49ers at the Browns. Um, very easy game for 49ers side. We're, we're starting them all essentially. Like you got to start all, you got to start McCaffrey, Kittle. Um, you can see what Kittle can do in one game. Like no, not many tight ends can do that. You got to start Ayuk and Debo. Like, are they all going to hit? Maybe not, but they could, one of them could really go off. They could all hit. Who knows? Like you just got to start them. Do you have any arguments there, dad? Oh no, definitely yeah. not. I would every start every one of them. Okay. So then Brock Purdy, let's say, um, tell me who you would start. Just a yes or no if you would start Brock Purdy over these guys. Um, Kirk Cousins in a bad weather game. Yes, I'd Purdy. Okay. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go with Purdy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Geno Smith? Uh, I think I'll take Geno. Okay. Couple more here, Jared Goff. I'll take Goff. Okay, and C.J. Stroud. Um, Purdy. Okay, and then we already said Sam Howe, so we, I think we'd take Purdy over Howe. So, yep, Niners are easy. We don't have to really talk about them. Um, and then the Browns, I think, are going to be easy this week. Like, if you can afford to sit Amari Cooper, I think we kind of want to. Just, again, like, we don't know what this offense is going to look like with P.J. Walker. Obviously, like, if you kind of have to start him. Like, I'm not I'm not starting um, Josh Palmer over Amari Cooper. I'm just, I'm just going to roll with Amari and hope he gets easy targets, you know? Like, I'm not going to go that far. But I would start, like you said, like Gabe Davis, Michael Thomas potentially over him. Michael Thomas, I don't know. I think I might lean a Cooper even over Thomas. Um but I think, Dad, you're a little more skeptical of this whole offense, right? Definitely. Um, and so, yeah, I don't want to start any other receivers besides Cooper. I'm not even going to think about that. And then the, um, I guess, the running back, Jerome Ford. It feels like he's kind of lost uh, his luster a little bit. like Lost his he, mojo or something. Yeah, I mean, he, had, he took over with Chubb. He had two... Week two, he had 22 points. Week three, he had 18. Week four, he had seven. Like, you can survive if he's going to have more positive games. So, like, 
No, no, he's kind of like, all right, let's, let's go through this. Jam Jerome Ford or DiMarcado for the Cardinals. And again, he's playing San Francisco. That is something to keep in mind. Tough run defense. I'm sorry. You started that again? Amari, Amari DiMarcado against the Rams or Jerome Ford against the 49ers? Um, the first guy. DiMarcado. Um, Ford versus the Baltimore guys. Hill, Justice Hill or Gus Edwards? Um, yeah, I might go Ford, you know, just one guy. If one guy's going to be, I know Kareem Hunt's in on the picture too, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jerome Ford or Chuba Hubbard? <laughs> uh, I might roll with Chuba. Okay. No, that's fair. I mean, 49ers are tough run defense, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would avoid him if I can as much as possible. So, you know, I'd start Deontay Foreman over him. Saquon coming back from injury, I'd start over Ford. Um, just a few other guys there. But I'm not going to start him over, like, Tajay Spears. I'm not going to start Tajay Spears over him. So um, that's kind of where we're at there. Um, yeah, I think that's it. You know, Njoku, we're not going to start. So I think that's it for this video. Um that's our five matchups. We'll be back with five more in the next video. As always, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time.